build up we have made it to the national championship game and with it being the national championship preview we got to get Dalton Wasserman in studio now Dalton joining us in studio for our preview of the national title game between number one Michigan and number two Washington but Dalton first off man thanks for joining us here man in lovely Cincinnati in the PFF studios oh I had to I mean for two reasons one it's obviously the biggest game of the year and two I feel like I had to prove I wasn't just an AI so you didn't <laughs> so you didn't have to just sit around and talk to yourself I'm, I'm like a real I'm a real person I'm not just something Max made up so uh, no but it, it's gonna be it's gonna be such a good national title game we just got a great final four just an unbelievable weekend of football and and what well, I mean I don't think you can ask for any more right no. The two, the, the last two undefeated teams in the country, I would honestly say probably the two best teams in the country from what we've seen. We've got a great matchup, Washington's offense versus Michigan's defense. Both of them coming off absolute wars of football games. It's going to be a lot of fun. Listen, I, I've battled some imaginary friend rumors before in the past, so this one I'm, I'm glad to disprove it right now. Dalton Wasserman is a real person. He's with us in studio. You mentioned, man, those games, the, those semifinal games were awesome that we just got on new year's day um we can start off with the michigan alabama game in the rose bowl michigan going to overtime with alabama winning 27 to 20 and your first text to me after that show after that game was man michigan just out coached nick saban yeah i think the number one reason they won the game max was play calling on both sides yeah. of the ball you had alabama we haven't seen that many busts in coverage mm -hmm. all season all season it was actually I believe the only game where they graded lower in coverage was the Texas game but in the Texas game they really got beat kind of man-to-man -man, right Texas mm -hmm. has a loaded group of receivers I I hadn't seen and and you really couldn't you couldn't kind of foretell them making that many mental mistakes on defense based on what we'd seen all year you and I both thought they were the best secondary in the country yeah right and part of that is just not making mistakes right that's that's part of you know obviously McKinstry and Arnold and all the guys with all the talent but they hadn't made that many mental mistakes, maybe in all their games combined on the mm -hmm. back end, to be honest with you. And there was just so many busts in coverage that, and, and to be honest, Harbaugh and Sharon Moore's play calling kind of created that, especially out of the backfield. But, you know, it, that was the biggest part of it. It felt like when Nick Saban talked about after the game that they beat themselves, they shot themselves in the foot. It really did feel like that, yeah. especially on defense. And then as far as Michigan's defense goes, we talked about in the preview, they could do one of two things with Jalen Milrow. They could either go the spy route like Georgia did, and mm -hmm. he kind of struggled throwing the ball against Georgia, or you could just blitz him every play. And they blitzed him on 57% of his dropbacks, and he just wouldn't get rid of the football. It's the one thing he does not do yet is get rid of the football quickly when he needs to. There's no hot reads. There's not a whole lot of quick game in Alabama's offense. And Michigan's blitz packages won them the game on defense. Dude, Jesse Minter, I thought I had the game of his life. And there are a lot of people saying Jesse Minter should be looking at, should be looked at for NFL defensive coordinator jobs after that game. I mean, he was unbelievable defensive play calling. Just a lot of stunts that confused Alabama's offensive line. Milrow took seven sacks in that game. Wasn't able to throw the deep ball either, which we'll get into in our preview of the national championship games. I think that's a big, big part of that game as well. But yeah, man, Jesse Minter, Sharon Moore, they both were outstanding. And it feels weird saying that Nick Saban, the greatest coach in college football history, was outcoached in a massive game like that, but that was the case in that one, man. So Michigan finally getting over the hump after losing to Georgia in, in horrible fashion in the Orange Bowl a couple years ago and losing to TCU, obviously, last year in the semifinal as well. Finally, going to the national championship game for the first time ever. This is the first time they're ever going to a national championship game. The last time they won the national title was 1997. That was actually the year before the BCS was invented. So Michigan going to the first ever national title game. So is Washington. Washington now going to their first ever national title game after beating Texas in the Sugar Bowl 37 to 31. It seemed like Washington had that game in the bag with like eight minutes left up by 13. Texas man mounted a furious comeback and it came down to the final play yeah it sure did and I mean the Dylan Johnson injury with right of just under a minute left really gave them time yeah because otherwise a punt what you know you had 40 seconds come off the clock if he wasn't injured they would have got the ball with maybe 12 to 15 seconds left mm -hmm. that's really an impossible task but no I mean it's kind of what Washington's defense has done all year though is bend but don't break and come up big in big moments right the pass breakup at the very end and Texas look I told you in the preview too the running game was going to give Washington a ton of problems yeah and I believe for the game they had a run defense grade of 41 uh, which was their worst of the year it, their Texas's offense was designed to beat Washington's defense and and it gave them as many problems as it possibly could although I thought Washington played much better defense in in the middle two quarters of the game really it was probably about a 
about a 35 minute stretch there where they played really really well defensively but at you know at the end of it all it's about Michael Penix and it's about outscoring Michael Penix and these three NFL caliber weapons that mm -hmm. they have and it's just an impossible but borderline impossible task. We will find out this week if it's impossible with Michigan having I, what I think we could say now is the best defense in the country. Um, but it's the story's always about Michael Penix and these receivers, and he was just unbelievable. Six big time throws, ninety three point pass, ninety three point eight passing grade. That was the best of his career, mm -hmm. and his ninety his ninety three point five overall grade, second best in any playoff or championship game we've recorded only behind Stetson Bennett against TCU last year in a game they won by 60. So just an unreal performance by Penix. And if he's got another one in in Washington, that's a real good shot to win. They absolutely do, man. I, my brother and I were watching that game together, and we looked at each other. When Texas was driving down the field in the last drive, we are like, man, if Washington loses this game, what a waste because Michael Penix Jr. has put up a historic performance, man. It was, it was stupid. I mean, he was throwing 50-yard handoffs, basically, to the receivers downfield. You mentioned it, six big-time throws, uh, tied his career high in that made a career high and passing grade as well. He was unbelievable. And we mentioned it in our preview of that game. Texas has a vulnerable secondary, and they took advantage of that vulnerable secondary in that game. And I'm glad you brought the Washington defense too, because yes, gave up 31 points to Texas. But you mentioned it, man. When they need to make a play, they make a play. And they absolutely did um, on that last one. I do want to talk about that final play for a little bit. I don't know if you saw, but some people were saying that A.D. Mitchell was open and instead of uh, you know throwing a bullet pass to him, which might have been the sealer, Quinny was kind of gave a little moon ball on that, made it a jump ball. So I, I kind of want to get your final uh, thoughts on that play and whether or not Quinny maybe should have rifled it in there instead of uh, throwing it up like he did. It, it's actually a similar thought to something. Uh, yeah, I've talked to some other people behind the scenes about this, and and the the end zone fade yeah. from like the 12, 13, and in is actually like the one of the least successful plays in football. It only works right around, I want to say, 28% of the time, unless you're really, unless like Mike Evans and Gronk were really <laughs> the only two guys who who really had even 50-50 success with it. Um, it. It's just not, it's not an efficient play. It just doesn't work. And, and you know, the back, a more direct back shoulder throw may have worked, but I, I honestly, I, I kind of, I think there needs to be a movement. I think some teams have gone away from it. Um, the end zone fade, the goal line fade, it, it does not work nearly as often as you think it does. And a lot of times coaches go to it in pressure situations just because it's kind of simple and mm -hmm. we think, oh, my guy's just going to win. But I think when if we put out there more that it only works like between 27 and 30% of the time, I think it'll start getting used in a lot less big spots. I think I saw, uh, I was looking at this one day, and I think like the Kansas City Chiefs in the last four or five years have only run a fade, a goal line fade, like, a single digit number of times they just don't they figured out yeah. just don't do it there's so many other things you can do you know you look at even like Michigan's play calling down on the goal line throwing to the backs and things like that or yep. the RPO game with the slide route at the end and there's just more efficient things you can do to create space than just essentially just picking a guy and playing basketball it doesn't work as often as you think it does no absolutely not so I mean those two unreal semifinal games now last year we had two unreal semifinal games and then maybe the worst national championship game in history I don't think it'll be the case this year. I think it's going to be a great game between Michigan and Washington. But now, man, we're guaranteed for the first time since 2018 to not have an SEC national champion because obviously LSU in 2019, Alabama in 2020, and then Georgia back-to-back -back years. Guaranteed now for the first time since Clemson in 2018 to have a non SEC national champion. If you're going off of next year's conferences, we're guaranteed to have a Big Ten champion between Michigan and Washington, who, by the way, are playing next year in a conference game as well. So let's get into, man, that national championship game. Obviously, Michigan going for their first since 1997, Washington going for their first since 1991. I mentioned it before, both teams playing in the national championship game for the first time in program history. Let's start off with number one Michigan when they're on offense, Dalton. What do you think their blueprint for success should be in this game against Washington? Um, I, I don't think it's any different than anything they've done the last six weeks. I, I'm going to be honest with you, even, even in this game, Michigan's offense has not been rolling on all cylinders, right? Over their last six games, they, they're they 57th in offensive grade. They're 53rd in EPA per play. They're 100th in pass protection. They're 99th in rushing grade. They're 107th in yards per carry. It's really – it's become the first – seven eight games of the year 
it, it was explosive, mm-hmm. but in part because they were playing just, just lesser teams, yeah. right? UNLV and Bowling Green and Minnesota and just teams that you just knew couldn't beat them, right? And there's been a couple recently that you knew, like even, even Purdue, Iowa, you knew Iowa wasn't going to beat them, but it just has not been as explosive. J.J. McCarthy's only completed four deep balls in his last six games. Just they're not getting over the top. And I think the formula for teams playing against Michigan right now is just don't let Roman Wilson behind you, yeah. right? Make him work down the field. And Michigan's basically become willing to work down the field. But it's been well publicized. Their offensive line is not as good as it's been in past years. And I think – it's just become this thing. I think Jim Harbaugh has accepted that they're going to play complementary football with the best defense in the country. You know, even the other night, four and a half yards of carry. For as mm-hmm. much as it felt like they were running all over Alabama, if you take sacks out of it, Alabama had 100 more rushing yards than Michigan did. I think it was 31 carries for somewhere around 139 yards, somewhere mm-hmm. in there. It, it's just – it's it's kind of plotting – but it's very safe. I mean, the, the best thing Michigan does, especially offensively, is they don't beat themselves. They have the best turnover margin in the country. Fewest penalties per game in the country. 13th in the country in time of possession. They just play keep away, and they let their defense win them ball games. And, and I don't – I know Washington's run defense, it's kind of been, it's kind of been torn to shreds mm-hmm. by the public a lot, but I think there's a certain style – that you can run the ball against Washington, right? And their three worst run defense games were against Texas, against USC, and against Arizona State. Mm-hmm. Which And everyone's going, well, Arizona State's awful. What? Well, they can run the ball well. And the common thread with those three teams, they run a ton of RPO. Yeah. It's very modern. It's very spread out. It's about spacing. We talked about – I talked about it ad nauseum last week. Texas run game was designed – to beat Washington's defense. They don't like to freeze and read and be in conflict and have to figure out where they need to be at all levels. Michigan doesn't do that. They run the third fewest RPOs in the country, only 44 all season. The only two teams with lower are Iowa, who's (laughs) Iowa, and Air Force, who just isn't going to do that. Right. So when you have a team that doesn't run a lot of RPOs, right against Washington they're actually 39th in the country in run D grade and before this Texas game they were 25th because mm-hmm. they just they struggled in run defense all night because again it's just schematically it's a horrible horrible matchup for Washington's yeah. front seven. I could argue that this Michigan game by the X's and O's is a better matchup for Washington's front seven just because it's not based on spacing and an RPO and making reads and finding the football Michigan comes right at you yeah, they do. There's different schemes up front that they run. You saw, I mean, they run they run a lot of man straight at you. Yep. They ran two power plays to win the game with Corm at the end. There's they, you know, they had the one counter with McCarthy that mm-hmm. was maybe their best play call of the night offensively. Yeah. Honestly, just a great call. Understanding that you can still run the ball within the last three minutes, even on Alabama, even when you're trailing, just using everything at your disposal. But I think as long as Washington can keep Michigan between the tackles. Which sounds funky because you would go, well, Michigan, they're like, they're so big. What's the deal? It's actually Michigan is much better getting off tackle when Corum bounces mm-hmm. outside of these tackles, outside of these tight ends, or they get to run in power like they did in overtime or counter. They get to the edges much better. It's just not as good an offensive line. They are just not as dominant between the tackles as they've been in past years. So you've got. I think a Washington team – is the physicality going to be a problem? Yes, but I think schematically it sets up a little bit actually better for them than it did in the Texas game. Yeah, absolutely. Before I get into uh, what I want to talk about in this game, of course, check out all of our uh, PFF-centric stats at PFF.com. Obviously, you saw a heat map with Michael Penix Jr. You can find all that and more at PFF.com. All the stats that Dalton and I are saying right now, you can find at PFF.com as well. You mentioned it, man. Michigan's uh, blueprint in this game is just dominate on the ground. I, I, they run the ball on 56% of the plays, sixth highest rate in the Power Five. Blake Corum leads the nation with 25 rushing touchdowns. Michigan also seventh in run blocking grade this year. So uh, as you know, offensive line is taking a step back for sure. Still seventh uh, in the Power Five in run blocking grade. Washington, we mentioned it before, how they're 72nd in run defense grade. What I wanted to talk about though was how Michigan. On 33% of Michigan's runs have been inside zone this year, which is basically, you know, going between the tackles, get Blake Corum, let him use his vision, which I think is his best attribute. Michigan runs 33% of the rushing plays, highest of any run concept. Washington has a 57.3 grade on inside zone runs this year. That's the fourth worst in the Power Five, and I believe it's 122nd in college football. So 
I think there's an avenue here for Michigan's interior offensive line to dominate in this game. And for Blake Corum, which, again, I think his best attribute is his vision, I think there's a way for him to get after Washington in that aspect. And I think Michigan is probably going to run a lot of inside zone in this game against a vulnerable Washington defense against that run concept. And if you do that, you take pressure off J.J. McCarthy to go throw for throw with Michael Penix Jr. because that's not a game you want to get into either. Uh, I think that is probably the avenue Michigan's going to want to do in this game is run inside zone, let your interior offensive line dominate, and let Blake Corum's vision kind of carry that offense in this game. Yeah, no, I yeah, I agree. I'm just curious. I'm curious to see if Harbaugh, how much stuff is packaged in with it, though, mm-hmm. right? If you if you just hand it off and everybody knows you're handing it off on Washington's defense, they stand a lot better chance. So it, in theory, like concept-wise, yes, but the inside zone is also – it's going to be the most common – RPO concept used right. by these other teams. So I think that's a big part of why, because when you're talking about playing USC, playing Oregon, playing all these teams in the Pac-12 that do the exact same things, I'm curious if he, because we saw it, like even the tying touchdown, right? Mm-hmm. That that looked like that looked like an RPO to me. And they, you know, if they're coming underneath with the slides and they're getting a lot of misdirection going along, or if just McCarthy's going to take off on a read option, I have no issue with that at all. Yeah. Honestly, at this point, McCarthy is better on the move, I think, than he is in the pocket. It, it's just between their pass protection and sometimes he just he just likes to hold the ball better, right? Mm-hmm. I think Washington does stand a chance. That is a problem. That's yeah. a big problem because I think with Michigan, it's obviously more about the play action. But how can Michigan add in misdirection yeah. to get these linebackers, to get these safeties to move? Because they, especially the safeties, really like in Washington's defense, Asa Turner and those guys, they really like to come up and help mm-hmm. and not have to worry about anything outside the numbers going on or underneath slide routes, things like that coming under. If they – if they just run straight at them, I actually do think Washington stands a chance. If there's nothing, if there's no other threats, if they're not putting yeah. any, if not putting anybody in conflict, and they're just relying on overpowering, it's it's going to look, I think, a lot like Michigan's looked recently, where it's been, look, they're really good at getting four or five yards. They only had, I believe, three explosive runs all night the other night. Yeah, it just, it's it it is plotting a little bit mm-hmm. now. If they do go in there and it's just read option and they go in there and run them over and they hit 40 minutes of time of possession, obviously they're at a big advantage. Because yeah. at this point, we're, I'm sure we're about to get into it, keeping Penix off the field <laughs> might just be the only way to stop yeah. him, honestly. It might be. And so, okay, so we talk about Michigan's offense, what they need to do in this game. Let's switch it over to the Washington defense. What do you think their blueprint is to success in this game? Um, they have to win early downs. Okay. I think they have a really underrated coverage unit. They're, yeah, 15th, so do I. they're 15th in the country in coverage grade. Mm-hmm. Now, I know there's been a talk they've given up somewhere in the top 20 most yards. But, again, look who they're playing Caleb Williams. They're playing Bo Nix twice. They're playing Texas, who has a high-flying offense. They're playing all those teams. Arizona, I believe they held Arizona to 21 points, mm-hmm. right? These are high-flying offenses. These are some of the best offenses. They have played six teams, six games against teams in the top 17 of offensive grade. Michigan's only played one, and that was Alabama. So, look, I think it has to be said for Washington people ripping their defense, the degree of difficulty, honestly, top to bottom, the Pac-12 was the best conference in the country this year. Yeah, The the Big Ten had, you know, three, and if you want to count Iowa as a fourth big boy in there, sure. And the SEC just was not as – it just wasn't as deep as it's been in past Mm -hmm. years, right? What Washington's coverage unit does, first of all, their linebackers, best coverage grade in the country. Yeah. Ulofosio and Bruner, both in the top 12 in coverage grade. And when you talk about a game where you're going to have to cover backs mm-hmm. and cover tight ends, Colston Loveland, Blake Corum, maybe Donovan Edwards. I don't think he had a catch against Alabama, but these are dynamic players coming across the field, coming out of the backfield. If you don't have these miscommunications like Alabama had and Washington's linebackers are seeing things clearly, that becomes a big problem because I don't think Michigan wants to throw the ball on the outside too, too much. They yeah. want to, you know, even when they get in their deeper passing game, it's generally more over the middle. McCarthy's got the arm strength. There's an occasional out route. There was a big 12 yard out. He hit on a third down, I believe in the third quarter, midway through the third quarter when Alabama had some momentum, he can hit those throws, but that's not their preferred way of doing things. Right. Look, Washington, they've got the 11th most interceptions in mm-hmm. the country. They have the 12th best coverage grade in single coverage. And they're number two in the country, I believe, behind Florida State and forced incompletions. Is it always like the best looking defense? No. But what they are is really, really competitive and they're ball hawks. And, and their third down coverage grade, fourth in the country. Yeah. So they show up 
when it matters if they're put in better situations. Now, if they're in third and two all night, they're going to have a huge problem. Yeah. I, I think early downs and getting it to a point where you can take advantage of your coverage unit and let Braylon Trice rip, leading the country in pressures, mm -hmm. 90 pass rush grade, six pressures in four straight games. Okay. Braylon Trice, now we said it last week with Turner and Braswell, right? And Michigan's tackles held up pretty well. I believe they only combined for five pressures, and Turner had Alabama's only sack. They only got one sack. So we worried about the pass protection this past week, and it held up. If it can hold up against Trice and Washington, who does do a reasonable amount of stunting and messing with you up front too, mm -hmm. then, you know, so be it. If they can pass protect in this game, they've got a big advantage, just like they did last week. But – Washington on early downs. You already mentioned the inside zone. Look, I, I think Michigan's going to try to bread and butter their way on early downs yep. to good situations. If they don't do that, if Washington gets them in third and seven, third and eight, I think people are really underrating this coverage unit. I, I think they absolutely are, man. And that's why I wanted to talk about was you got to make J.J. McCarthy beat you. Have to. If it turns into a game between J.J. McCarthy and Michael Penix Jr., that is a massive advantage for Washington. And like I said, I mean, Michigan's main defensive focus is going to be neutralizing Washington's passing, which we'll get into in a second. But the Huskies are going to try to shine a spotlight on Michigan's in this game. Michigan's, uh, obviously, biggest offensive strength is their run game. Matches up with Washington's biggest weakness we just talked about in their run defense. The Huskies, I think they should commit some heavy boxes in this game to kind of neutralize Blake Corum in that ground game. Then it'll be on J.J. McCarthy to beat them. You see that right there. In his last five games, he has a 65.2 passing grade with three big-time throws and six turnover-worthy plays. Those five games, coincidentally, are the only five defenses that have a top 25 coverage grade in the country, and Washington is 15th in coverage grade. You see that 56.2 against Penn State, 47.4 against Maryland. His best game was against Ohio State. Still only a 75.2 passing grade in that game, man. So when he's faced those defenses that have a top 25 coverage unit, he struggled for the most part. And Washington, like you just mentioned, is 15th in that same metric. So I think Washington has the secondary in this game to bother J.J. McCarthy that if they sell out and stop Blake Corum and stop that offensive line from creating massive holes against them, then if it's J.J. McCarthy against that secondary, I really like Washington's chances in that game. So I think Washington's main defensive focus is make J.J. McCarthy beat you and make him, make him be the best player on the field in that game. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think, it, again, the more – you can get them into straight dropback situations. Right? Yeah, it's just, it's it's just not their forte. I, I think Michigan is kind of you know some of those other teams on that board there. They're kind of everything that Penn State and Iowa want to be. They have just right now they have just enough in the passing game. Right, some of the numbers are tilted from some early season games and totals. But again, the last six games it's been conservative. It's get you know convert on third and four, third and five when we need to. Right? There, there hasn't been a whole lot of drop back. You know, if I'm Michigan, actually, I think the one thing I would like to see, get McCarthy on the move more. Where is, where is some bootleg? Where's some rollouts? Like, I, I think, again, we talked last week about him rolling to his right. I, I think that's really the best play on their offense mm -hmm. right now, at least in their passing game right now, is get him, get him on the move. I think, I think as a, I don't know that they use him enough as a dual threat, Max. I, I think if they just try to drop back, you know, and I was, you know, and they rolled him to his right on the first play of the game, and he caught a break that it wasn't an interception. But I, I like the idea. Now the decision has to be better, but I do like the idea. Like, let's get him on the move. Let's make him a two-way go. You know, I, I don't, I don't. It, it's not the drop back game if they if they fall behind early, which they pretty much never do. Mm -hmm. And even even getting themselves back in at the end of the game in the fourth quarter, there wasn't a whole lot of drop back in there. It was it was quick to the flat when there was bus in coverage. The McCarthy design run was big. They kept, they still stayed, they had enough time with what, about five minutes left to stay within kind of the foundation of their offense. Yeah. Is there any way, Mich uh, sorry, Washington can get them out of that? Yep. And, and get them just not to, you know, pop off five, six yards of carry and constantly be in third and two. Because Michigan, even at third and two, fourth and two, they're still gonna run it. They're gonna put two tight ends on the field and run it. Can you get Michigan in third and eight? Mm -hmm and just make them drop back and throw it. And if McCarthy executes, then I, I think you laid your best chips on the table, yeah. and so be it. But I think right now you have to make him do it. You have to make him drop back there and make reads and make – and more than anything, I think, make them pass protect. Yeah. Because it's just, it's just not there. I told you, even back to the Penn State game, they couldn't block Penn State. No. Their pass pro against Ohio State was not particularly good. I think in this game it was around a 65, their pass blocking grade, which is – 
just good enough. Yeah. Pretty much everything. Against Turner and Braswell, as good as you expect, honestly. Yeah, and yeah. pretty much everything Michigan did in this game against Alabama was just good enough. Yeah. Just about. And, and, and again, the, the difference to me was the coaching and the play calling, but I don't know against – Washington's offense and maybe the amount of points that they can score. If Penix plays like he did on Monday, I don't know that just good enough is just good enough this time. Absolutely not. And dude, Braylon Trice has mentioned you said six pressures, right, against Texas in that game? Yeah. And two sacks as well. He's a defensive MVP of that Sugar Bowl. It's worth mentioning, Texas might have well, I have to look at it real quick, but Texas might have the best tackle duo in college football between Kelvin Banks Jr. at left tackle, Christian Jones at right tackle. I believe they do, actually. Yeah. I think, I think the pass block, I think it is number one at tackle. I think overall they're number, I want to say number three or four, uh -huh. but the tackles are number one. Yeah, absolutely. And Christian Jones, I believe, was our second team All-American right tackle behind J.C. Latham. I believe. I have to look back and, and get that, but he was a star this year. Kelvin Banks is a star. He made them look dumb on some plays. And at Michigan's tackles, we mentioned before, Yes, they held up in the Alabama game just enough, but Braylon Trice is a future first-round pick, man, and he beat some really darn good tackles that Texas had, and I think that's a big key in this one as well, is Michigan uh, trying to stop Braylon Trice from, from beating him as well because he was a big, big factor in that game, defensive MVP of that game. All right, let's get to the uh, – that was really fun, and obviously Michigan's ground game is going to be what hopefully carries them to victory, they're hoping. Other side of the ball is probably the thing that everyone wants to talk about right now, which is Washington's high-flying offense against probably the best defense in college football. Let's start with Washington, though. What should their blueprint be offensively in this game against the best defense they played all season? Well, I'll tell you, I, I think it starts, obviously. Any Washington game, and I've probably said this once or twice, but I should have just said it every week. Any Washington game, no matter who their opponent is, it's about Michael Penix, yeah. right? And it's about how in the world do you stand a chance? Mm -hmm. and, and the big thing is... If you, if you only send four or less at this guy, you might as well sit in the stands be a spectator like yeah. this. It's, it's just not possible, right? He, he, when he has time, is the best quarterback in the country when he has time. Now, Texas came out. They tried to blitz him. They blitzed him 16 times. Mm -hmm. 11 of 16, 164 yards, two big-time throws, 88.2 <laughs> passing grade, which I think was his second best of the year against a blitz. If he's going to throw like that, when you blitz, mm -hmm. I don't actually know how to stop him. I, it's because that was my answer for probably the last month. As you, yeah. as you would ask me, you go, how do you slow down Washington? What do you, go get him. Go get him. I, I, look, I'm expecting more of the same from Michigan. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll be 57% like it was against Alabama, because against Alabama it was working from the first play of the game. Yeah. Now, there are times, though, when Washington, they, they have more answers for it because Penix will actually get rid of the ball. Even if that answer is, hey, Romo Dunze jump ball, mm -hmm. Alabama didn't have a guy like that. I, I think something that's getting underrated, the highest graded aspect of Michigan in their last two games has actually been the coverage. Mm -hmm. Okay, Once they played Iowa, which is reasonable. And in this game, I think we just saw Alabama's receivers, if you don't make mistakes in the secondary, they only allowed one deep ball the whole game, one deep completion on a corner route. Mm -hmm. If you don't make mistakes back there, I told you Milrow has a knack for finding those mistakes, then, you know, just he, he does not beaten fundamentally sound defenses over the top. And Michigan's as fundamentally sound as it gets. As far as Penix and Washington goes, I think watching more of this tape, what, what I like the most about their offense, okay, two things. Third best pass blocking grade in the country against the Blitz. Mm -hmm. So they stand a chance. If, Mis if Michigan does come out, and blitz them like crazy, they're the third best at stopping it. Bama only 48th, okay? Yeah. And they have a knack for just always finding a way to get their guys into single coverage. Even, even you know, obviously if it's man-to-man, -man, look, if it's man-to-man -man and Odunze or Polk is solo on the mm -hmm. backside somewhere, they're getting a goal ball. Yeah. This is not a question. Like, if they go, you know, so way so, so many times where you see, like, trips right – out here by himself, Odun Zaire Polk, and that's just the whatever else the players is off. It's <laughs> yeah. just off. Yep. It's it's back shoulder. It's over the top. It's uh, we saw it I think twice to Odun Zay against Texas. The one in the fourth quarter was just filthy, stupid. That's I, it's, I wouldn't even late bad. late hands, dude. Everything it wasn't was even bad coverage. No, it was I perfect mean, coverage. And he and he put the ball in before the corner even had his head turned. Yeah, I, that that would I, the the number of stupid throws Penix made in that game was ridiculous. But again, single coverage. Okay, Washington's wide receivers for the season. You ready? Second in receiving grade, second in receptions, first in yards, first in touchdowns, first in first downs, first in contested catches, first in explosive plays. They find ways. But this is even like 
not just man to man, I'm talking like press cover one, like jump balls, Devontae Adams, back shoulders, all that stuff. Their play calling, when they even see deep zones, corners, mm-hmm. and things like that, they have such a knack for just – Kalen DeBoer is a genius, man. He is. The way – if they have time, as long as they're protected, and it's good they have a top five, they won the Joe Moore Award. Mm-hmm. I mean, my goodness, their pass protection is so good. But they have a knack for just isolating guys even in zone coverage as long as they have time. Like, if you're a safety and you're playing Washington, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare because you got one post coming behind you. You got a deep over coming in front of you mm-hmm. constantly. They just they find ways to isolate guys, even when if teams try to sit back and zone. Okay, cool. We'll play too high. We'll just sit here and wait. At like Alabama has a knack for taking advantage of mistakes on the back end. Washington is the master of creating them. Mm-hmm. It's there's a difference. Like or even so, then you know switch it up. Okay, fine. We'll go single high, right? And it's just like run off 15 yard out. He makes a he makes a wide side 15 yard out throw look like nothing. I, I, I just the way that they isolate guys and they get him into single coverage. And look, Michigan, this is gonna this is gonna be the story, especially at corner, mm-hmm. right? Michigan in single coverage, seventh best coverage grade, most interceptions in the country, right? 49.5 passer rating when it's single coverage into Michigan State. But they haven't seen a unit like this. No. All year. Ohio State's is the closest, but Kyle McCord is nowhere near Penix. That's Syracuse's quarterback you're talking about, by the way. Uh, it, it sure is. So <laughs> figure it out. Single coverage and under pressure, figure it out. Better have some pass pro at Syracuse. But yeah. they, they just – the combination of Grubb and DeBoer mm-hmm. call, calling concepts – to get their guys isolated. Three NFL receivers, by the way. Penix reading it, and then just the timing. It's it's incredible what they can do when they see the coverage. And they just have – he just needs enough time. That's all he needs, and he's going to kill you. Absolutely. I mean, you just mentioned it, man. I mean, that, that basically was a perfect breakdown because it, it's just Michael Penix Jr. got to be special again, man. Got to be special again. Michael Penix Jr., uh, there's nothing else to say. He was sensational in, in that Sugar Bowl, man. 430 yards against Texas, 93.8 passing grade, which is, again, his highest in the season. Eli, if you have that graphic again of the uh, the splits of just his deep throws, if you could throw that up again. because Man, it was stupid what he was doing. You see that two for two outside left, one for three, couple touchdowns in the middle. That one touchdown, we rifled it in between oh. the two safeties, dude insane you know i always knew he had the the touch and all that when he rifled it in, i was like man he's got the velocity too to to make those throws uh, he was awesome i, I think game. i think for some reason in the next like 24 hours after the game i i kept hearing this question around places and it was did michael Penix just play himself into the first round and, <laughs> and my my that was his, that was the week one my argument, immediate thought was like where have you been where have you been where yeah. first of all he was second in the heisman yeah, that's well deserved second in the highs. Anybody saying now, oh, he should have got over Daniels? No. But where have you been? Yeah. Because these throws, he's got thirty nine big time throws on the year now that leads the country. This, he's special. Uh, like I, you don't look even the first corner to Polk in the first quarter. That ball, I think it was somewhere around forty seven yards uh-huh. on a to the pole, to the corner. Yeah. In like with like maybe a half a step, the corner a handoff. Was be, like, it was a handoff. Just no special. I. You know we have him. I think we have him number thirty on the big board right now. I I think he's in the top fifteen. We'll get we'll get to that with uh, Trevor in a future episode. We're going to argue with him on some uh, some of his rankings. We're really talking about the only it. things you can say about him. Obviously the injury history. Yeah. There's nothing in the last two years of tape that tells me that's a problem. Yeah. Six year and senior. The mobility isn't yeah. Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, Bowden, whatever. But if you look at even when he was pressured the other day. He's got he's got that feel for the pocket. Yeah. When they talk about some Joe Burrow or like Mahomes inside the pocket, like the feel he has just just maneuvering the pocket, it's all you need. It's not a requirement that you have to go out there and do Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson no. things. It's I know it's fun now, and yeah. I know it's like there's so much out of structure, but he out of structure can also just be late in the play within the pocket. See like Tom Brady ever mm-hmm. right. If he's going to maneuver the pocket like that, then you've just got a whole you've got a whole different animal. I get that he doesn't throw off platform, but what if he's just never off platform? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about mobility wise, Dongs. I don't know if you saw Michael Irvin's comp for him after that game was uh, Michael Vick for Michael Penix Jr. <laughs> I, for every every left-handed quarterback, every is, every, every left-handed, every lefty, I, every I lefty just, and a Michael. His name is Michael too. That's I, the only, I actually, that's the only two comps to be, I can see to be honest with you, the the thought I had a thought on this about a probably about a month ago or so, maybe after the second Oregon game. I think I think it's actually a lot more like Tua, but with a stronger arm. Yeah. 
I think it's stronger arm to us. And, and let's be real for a second on the mobility. It was only three carries and 30 yards, but that was a season high. That, yeah. It's a season that, high rushing. I, that game. opened so my eyes. There was, there was a design carry. I think it was on a power, some sort of read option sort of thing. I want to say early, mid fourth quarter, somewhere in there, that he took like 12 yards and slid down. I was like, oh, if they're going to just start putting this in now, because he's not like some awful athlete. No, no, he's no. Not, yeah. He's not going to go to the combine and run a 5'5". Five five. No, not, yeah. He's not you or me, right? <laughs> like, he's he's still a good athlete, Like, and, and they just don't use him as such. I, would, I wouldn't want to get him hurt, would no. you? I mean, that dude's, that dude's left arm is golden, man. But he, he's still – he had 30 yards. If he has to take off – he will, and he knows how to protect himself. Yeah, I, I don't. I think it's being made way too much of like injury history, and oh, he's a pocket quarterback. Like pocket quarterback now is used as an insult. He's the best between him and maybe Drake May. Michael Penix is the best pure pocket passer in the country. Yeah, I, I would say he is, man. He he's been absolutely outstanding. So yeah, not, not Michael Vick mobility, but he does have a little bit of uh, that element in his game, and more than I thought he did honestly before that Sugar Bowl. He was fantastic again. And listen. Washington needs him to have another game of his life for the second week in a row. Uh, but Michigan's defense, I want to bring up, is a different animal than anything that Washington's faced this season. If you look at the splits right now, uh, Michigan's defense against the best that Washington's faced, Michigan, overall great, number one in the country. Washington, the best one they faced was Texas in that Sugar Bowl, who was tied for 16th in EPA per play. Michigan, number one in the country. Best they faced, Texas, number 19. Coverage great, Michigan, number one in the country. Oregon, best they faced at 14th. They faced them twice, obviously. And then pass rushing great, Michigan. Michigan, number four in the country, Texas, 16th. So, I mean, we're talking about they, – they haven't faced really a top 15 defense all season. Michigan's the best defense in college football. So, this is a, a major, major uh, battle and a, and a major test for Michael Penix Jr. And listen, man, he could have a – if he has an unreal game like he did against Texas or even something close to that – that could be like a C.J. Stroud versus Georgia game where it's like, okay, wait a minute. This is way different than what we thought for him. That's what I think he could have an opportunity to do against Michigan, obviously on the biggest stage of them all in the national championship game. But I think if any secondary, maybe besides Alabama, has a chance of covering these receivers and a chance of slowing down Michael Penix Jr., it's probably Michigan. I just mentioned number one in coverage grade. Their secondary star study, man. You got Will Johnson. We're going to do a uh, – all eligible mock draft and I think I, I don't want to put words in your mouth but I think Will Johnson for me will be the number one corner in that mock draft I I, I think that guy's special man he, it's gonna be close to some other guys but I, he might be like a top 10 ish pick in that mock Kool-Aid still has to be up there okay so, I mean he's all right we'll argue out. that he's lights out we're, we're, we're gonna find a couple of guys to argue about but I think between him and Kool-Aid they have okay to, they, they've got to be up there right? yeah they have to be up there they, absolutely this Michigan team I, I think it's the one thing that I sold short when I made my pick last week. These mm -hmm. these three corners they have, all right. Um, Will Johnson, Josh Wallace, Mike Stun. Sanra still. Yeah. There's not a better trio in college no. football at, at corner. Sanra still in the slot is unbelievable yeah. all the way around. And Josh um, Wallace, who transferred from UMass, and he's, he's been great on the outside He's, for he's spectacular. Look, yeah. they, they have the fourth highest graded group of corners in the country. That Those three guys are, are just – they're just studs, man. Yeah. I mean, if there's – they may be the only team that if Michigan did decide – to go like blitz all game press cover one let's just you versus me let's go they might be the only team that can do it mm -hmm. and and you mentioned about the whole defense overall it's actually the highest graded defense over the last four years not just this not just this year it's the highest graded defense since um ohio state was at chase young and uh, yeah. chase young in 2019 so it it's and it's like it's this weird thing too of like it's not now will johnson's great yeah and we've talked about, like, you know, Barrett and Coulson at linebacker are great and all these guys. But, like, they don't have they don't have a single guy with 30 pressures. Mm -hmm. They don't have – I don't think – did they have a single guy make first team All-America on, on defense? Not our – no, not our list. Uh, not on our list. I don't know yeah. about on any list. Like, it, this is – I don't know that I've ever seen a defense that's just such a balanced group yep. effort. Like, it's – they're so – best D-line in the country. Fourth at linebacker, fourth at corner. The only one is safety, they're 23rd, and they're 30th in coverage grade. But even that, man. I mean, Rod Moore is a stud. Yeah. Like, it, he's a really good player. He is. I, I mean, and it's not – look, twenty to have the 23rd best safeties out of 130-something teams is still yeah. like, wow, you got some really – you got to – you know, it's just compared to the rest. Yeah. When you have Mason Graham killing it in the middle and you have Barrett pass rushing like, like he's Parsons and, and, and these three corners, it's just – they're so balanced, and I think the safeties – if the safeties are going to be the only way you attack them, most teams – you know, this is where the deep ball is going to come into it, right? And, and and their scheming 
because I think Washington gets on team safeties better than any team in the country. Mm-hmm. The, the more I watch them, like those teams that stress like curl flat players yeah. and those teams that stress one-on-ones or those teams that throw to their backs really well, right? I think about Oregon with Bucky Irving, right? Mm-hmm. Nobody stresses deep safeties like Washington. They're going to have to get there. And, 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 the, and again, it starts with if Michigan's going to blitz them 57, 60% of the time like they did to Bama, they have to pass protect. Look, all seven sacks and 10 out of their 12 pressures last week were when they blitzed, mm-hmm. okay? Two, only two pressures last week when they sent four or less. So I would assume that they're going to they're gonna blitz like crazy. Now, I'm curious what they have in coverage. Yeah. Is it, is it single high? Is it like kind of classic press man one? Is it a lot of zone blitzing? Mm-hmm. Is there how many disguises can they put together in a week? Is there something where they could even go like two man and try to just really make the windows tight for Penix or, or what? Because – I, I, Washington, they don't throw to the backs a whole, whole lot. So I'm assuming if Michigan's blitzing, they're going to leave them in. Yeah. Okay, they're going to leave them in in protection, and they're just going to make it what it is. How much does Michigan challenge these receivers? A- and they have the talent to do it. Mm-hmm. Johnson, Wallace, Sandra still more the safeties, you know, and even Junior Colson's excellent coverage yeah. too, right? They, I, again, just like last week, I'm curious which answer Michigan goes with. Last week it was – are you going to spy? Are you going to blitz? Now it's on the back end. Is it man? Is it zone? Is it press? Is it off? Is it Because Washington has answers for a lot of it, mm-hmm. but how much can you switch it up and how much? How well can you execute it to where you delay panics for you need three-tenths of a second? Yeah. Right? You can't – if he if he finds it right around 2-7, 2-8, and he's protected, you're fried. Yeah. You're done. If you can make him hold it for 3-1, 3-2, 3-3 – then you can get there, but they they I I think the blitz I think the heavy blitz game plan isn't going isn't going anywhere. I don't think it's going anywhere because I think against Penix for most of the year it has worked, and against Alabama, obviously you saw it. Now Milrow holds the ball longer than anybody, and he just they don't have hot they don't have quick stuff, and he's Milrow's not as willing to throw off his back foot as Penix, but that's going to be the key to me is Michigan. What do they have? in the blitz package and what are they going to respond with in coverage or is it just going to be a mix of they're going to throw the kitchen sink at them yeah so what would you if you're jesse minter what would you do defensively would you send the house at panics most of the time or would you kind of trust your your secondary to it's going to sound funky this is it's it's so hard because there's not a right answer two things i think you can't give them the same look twice in a row Mm -hmm. because they'll find it because because deborah and grub are always just ahead of it you can you can just see in their tape how often they are right with their concepts about the coverage they're facing. You have to mix it up. You have to find ways to disguise it, make him hold the ball just a tick longer than he wants to. I, I wonder if they have a look in that's – because generally, if you run – this is going to sound crazy. If you run two-man, you, mm-hmm. you can't blitz. The yeah. numbers aren't there, right, because you've got five receivers and two safeties and all that. I wonder if there's – you don't see teams do this often. If they have, like, a five-man rush with two-man behind it. If that makes sense. Okay. Now, yeah. I, look, that's that's getting way out of the book because look, Michigan they run a lot of three, they run a lot of one. It's, it's kind of traditional on defense. They'll rotate safeties a bit, but they don't do like wild stuff. Yeah. The the D line they do a lot of stunting and, and, and freaky stuff up mm-hmm. front. That that got Alabama's interior bad. The stunts up front were just killing them. It's it's going to be look. It's going to be more about getting two panics than anything. Because if you don't get to him, you just I don't think you just can't beat him. He doesn't miss right. But if there's a two-man look, if we see that, oh, Washington's just never going to throw to the backs, yeah, right, and you can trail and you can just take away and, and just make them make as many as many as of those tight throws as possible, then I think you stand a chance. Because throwing the deep ball constantly, it should not be as efficient as did we see seven for eight up yeah, there? Basically, it, yeah. It's, it's not, that's not supposed to happen. Now, yeah. if, if that's just what, how good this Washington team is, then they're the best team in the country. Yeah. But I, I think they have to trust, I would go man coverage. Mm-hmm. And it sounds, it sounds wild, but if Will Johnson and Wallace and Sandra still are that good, yeah, then let's see them be that good. And Johnson's I, a man corner too, man. Yeah. He excels in man coverage. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Will Johnson versus Romo Dunze, you won't That's, get any – Yeah. One way or the other, Washington was going to get a fun secondary to play, mm-hmm. and they get Michigan's. And, and I just I, – I still think the biggest component is about just how much time he has in the pocket. 
I would I would go man to man if I was Michigan. Let's let's go. Let's compete. I, I'm not letting them sit back there and make reads and find windows and and do and again. I think their scheme is better than any team in the country when they see zone coverage of still finding ways to craft one-on-one matchups. Yeah. Right. Especially, especially, uh, Max. I'm telling you, if you give them enough time and they get on their safeties, even Michigan. Yeah, it's rough. They're gonna get burned. It's over. They're yeah. gonna get burned. It absolutely is. And we mentioned, man, Penix, four hundred thirty yards, highest passing grade of his career. Highest graded receiving core in the country with three. Uh, one of them is going to be a top 10 pick at Roma Dunes. The other two right now we have as day two projected picks in Jalen Polk and Jalen McMillan. It's really a matter of when, not if, he'll find them with a perfectly placed moon ball. Unless you don't give him time to throw that ball to begin with. And I think that is exactly what Michigan's strategy was in the Rose Bowl. Because Jalen Moreau, listen, he's not probably as accurate as Michael Penix Jr. But man, he throws that deep ball as well as almost anyone in college football, and he throws it a lot as well. And Michigan knew that. They said, hey, man, we lose if Jalen Moreau is just uncorking that thing downfield. So they didn't let him do it. They, they again, blitzed him on 57.1% of his dropbacks. Before that game, Michigan's blitz rate was just 42.8%. So they blitzed at a way higher rate than they usually do. Milrow, season high, seven sacks. And he only attempted three passes of 20 plus yards, which was his second fewest total of the season. And I believe the other one was against Mississippi State, and I believe he was taken out early in that game. So it's almost the second few, his fewest of the season because he played the whole game. So Jalen Moreau was not able to do that because of the blitzes and because it got him so many times. Um, now, listen. Washington pass blocking wise significantly better than Alabama. They're fifth in the country in pass blocking grade. Alabama is 48th in the country in the country in pass blocking grade. But Michigan, like we just mentioned before, they're the fourth best pass rushing grade in the country right now. Not a lot of superstars. Uh, Mason Graham is a guy that I really love at D tackle, and I think he. I don't know if he'll sneak into that first round all eligible mock draft, but he has been phenomenal in his true freshman and now his true sophomore year. But I still think that Michigan needs to get after Penix because if you give him time back there, I know how good Michigan's secondary is, but any secondary in the country will break down against those receivers and against Michael Penix Jr. if you give him enough time. So the key in this game is don't give him enough time. And the other thing Michigan doesn't have to do in this game, they did it against Alabama, they don't really need a spy in this game either. They kind of had a spy a few times against Alabama because obviously the, the rushing threat that Milrow has, you have to account for that. Penix does have underrated mobility, but I don't think you need to send a spy after Michael Penix Jr. for that. So that frees up another defender that you could have in coverage or as a pass rusher. So I, I think Michigan's defense, if you get after Michael Penix Jr., that is the way for you to win this game. I don't think you want to be relying on your secondary to cover those receivers and to cover Michael Penix Jr. throwing a perfect place deep ball. And when you have a guy who's less mobile, I, I think – if you're going to go man coverage, you're at a little more of an advantage. Like right. It's so hard to go man coverage against – unless your blitz, unless the blitz does get home, it's so hard to go man yeah. coverage against a guy like Milrow. Because your like, backs are turned and he can you, just go. All, yeah. You can't see him. Yeah. Right. You can't see him. If the blitzes weren't getting home, Alabama might have beat him by a lot. Because, yeah. because he just then he'll just take off running and do all that. Quarterback run against man coverage is a nightmare, right? But right. Penix – isn't a big, big threat with that, even though he just set his season high. It was only yeah. 30 yards, right? <laughs> I, I just, I, I think they, I think they could do it. I think they can try to go man coverage early. Try, I think to offset you. What you want to do, if you marry the blitz with throwing off the timing, mm -hmm. right, of of the receivers, and and even even timing on deep balls, it's it's still people think it's just oh it's one, this guy's fast and this guy's got a cannon and we can just rip it. There's timing on deep balls, too, yeah, everything, absolutely, you know, just right when right when a safety makes a false step, right when right when a corner has. I mean, we saw it, again. We mentioned that the go ball to Odunze in the fourth quarter, Ugh. the time, everything, ball placement, all that stuff, the route, but the timing on that. To mm -hmm. time that just right to where the corner doesn't have his head turned, mm -hmm. th that's crazy. I mean, the, the number of reps that takes and just the precision that takes. But I think press coverage might be an answer for me. Just just to throw it off just a little and make make the window a little tighter and make the make the throw come just, you know, if the blitz gets home a little sooner than he wants. It, it's it's these little marginal things that yeah. you, you have to find against what – because you, you don't stop Penix. He's no. not going to come out here and go 15 of 40 for 120 yards and whatever else Drew Aller's stat line was against Michigan. But come on, I'm, come I, on! I had to, I had to do it. I had to do it. But it's he's not going to do that. 
Yeah. Uh, you, ha- you have to contain them. The teams that have all these teams in these close games, a lot of them that have stood a chance – against Penix. There was a lot of grades like in the high 70s or like right around 80, right? Mm. You just can't let him go crazy like Texas did. If he – look, let's just be real. He finds a way to put up another another 93 passing grade, mm. Washington's going to win. And, and you just have to – you have to set that off just a little bit between getting to him and, and I think jamming the receivers and the timing. I, if I'm Michigan, I'm one of maybe only two or three teams in the country that could challenge them, I would do it. All right, Don, I think it's time now. I, I, I can't wait for this, man. So we've been building up for it for a year. Uh, who ultimately will Michigan win their first title since 1997 or will Washington take home their first title since 1991? Who is winning the national man, championship make, game? Making the visitor go first feels like a coin toss, <laughs> man. Um, this is a hard one because my, my brain – my brain tells me Michigan's the best team in the country. Mm-hmm. You, you look at the grade, you look at the metrics, you look at the way they've played all year. I think all year they've been the most well-rounded team in the country, yeah, for sure. Um, it's it's this this is harder than I thought it would be. I, I I'll be honest with you. I think if it was Michigan Texas, I would feel really good about p- picking Michigan. Oh, absolutely. I, I just think the that's ca- the team they want to play I think, against. I, yeah. I think the counter punches would have been a lot easier. The run game, make viewers, make real throws, all that stuff. Penix can make all all the real throws, and I, I was thinking about it. Did oh we didn't we didn't announce the the game pick total. Oh, I was gonna do it at the end. I was gonna do it. Oh, at you're the gonna end. do it at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All yeah, right. Yeah. Well, here. Uh, well, the the mini one from there is that we we did I believe it was six Washington games. Uh huh. And I picked Washington in all six. Uh huh. And there I came to a point where like in the Oregon State game where for whatever reason they were underdogs. I have no idea. The second Oregon game when they were. 10 point underdogs and I didn't understand it at all and then in this game in the Texas game they were underdogs and I really didn't Dude, understand that at all Vegas either. does not know what the hell Washington well, is I, I don't, I don't know. understand when the way that I've heard Penix talked about in the last couple of days with did he just get himself sneak himself into the first <laughs> where have you, again where have you been because for two years where have you been I, I, I don't like for two years especially for the two just watch the three Oregon games can I flex a little bit right now absolutely I, I put the way too early mock draft out for PFF after the 2023 draft um so I was able to write that one which is really fun I'm hoping we could do it again this year um I put Penix at number 11 in that mock draft before this season so I, I don't know where this oh Michael Penix you're coming out of no 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 he's been like this for two he, years yeah, he might he was good at Indiana he, too he might man sneak into the first <laughs> What are we? What are we doing here? Like I, I don't. What? What? What has been missed? Uh, yeah. Do, do we just watch way too much Washington football? I, we that, might have, man. We've watched it, way too is, much college is football it, to begin is it with. Us? <laughs> well, yeah, we do. We just melt our brains with it. But, but I, I'm, I'm losing that. Like Michael Penix is not just like, oh man, this guy played really good. Yeah. It, that dude is special. Yeah. And and I I'm gonna be honest with you. I think he's I think he's special enough to win this game. I, I think him, those receivers are special. That's, that's yeah. It's the best crew of receivers in the country. By far. Even even better than Ohio State. It's probably the best since, what, LSU 2019? Yeah. Or maybe even, like, Garrett Wilson, Olave, Marvin Harrison. Well, like I could probably. argue that LSU team. Yeah. With, uh, just because, I, yeah, these three guys. It's, now that McMillan is healthy, yeah. it's unbelievable. I, I just – people count out Washington way too much. I, I've been saying it for a while. I, they, they're down on their defense too much. Their defense, yeah. it's not the best defense in the country. But it's like a good defense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That sees a lot of volume of a lot of what's going on in the Pac-12 against elite offenses. Mm -hmm. Right. It's Penix. It's hard. It's it's so hard. And and in the biggest spot, I I know. I know. My head tells me Michigan all the way around is better. I I just I can't. I cannot bring myself to pick against Penix. I I can't. He's just. It seems he, de- it seems like destiny, he's man. He's special. Yeah, like he's not just good. He's special. Like to me, between like again like draft slots like nine and eighteen, there's like five teams. If I was sitting there, I'd be like, oh, Michael Penix is my guy. Yeah, honestly, he's he's that good. And to come out and have a game like that against Texas, when it's essentially a road game, all those Texas people in the Superdome down there. It's only what about a three hour drive for him. Yep. I, I mean. To go and do that and just play lights out ball and be even with all the receivers like you look at the grading you look at just the I, he's the best player on the field I think he's the best player on the field in this game yeah I, I do I, I agree I, I don't th- and I know Michigan's got studs on defense and Blake Corm and Roman Wilson and even McCarthy Michael Penix the best player on either side here I, I it's gonna be tough 
it's going to be really tough. And I think the biggest, biggest thing is keeping Washington, keeping the time of possession mm -hmm. reasonably close. I think Michigan's best road. It, look, if Michigan's just the best team in the country and that's it, well, then so be it. Yeah, I don't. It's not going to be what sixty-five to three like it was last year. Mm -hmm. we're, not, we're not doing that again, right? This is this Washington team is not like that TCU team at all, right? I'll take Washington, thirty to twenty-seven. I I I just I I can't. If for nothing else, Max, I I'm not even going to tell you. I have a boatload of logic in this. <laughs> I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I I just I can't pick. It against, seems like destiny, man. I can't pick against Penix. It really does. I, seem I have like I have not done it all year. I'm six and zero oh picking Washington. I can't do it. And I do think even if Michigan wins, this this is going to be a really fun game. Oh yeah. I, I just don't, I don't. If I was Washington. I would come out the same way I just did against Texas. And I know the coverage units are completely different. But let's go. Just let him have the game. Yep. Just honestly. Win or lose and, on him. And I, and I think a lot will be made this week. Uh, is there any update on Dylan Johnson yet? He, they said he is expected to play, which I was surprised by. So I, I don't know how limited he'll be, but he's expected to play. I think even if he wasn't, I, I think – and I love Dylan Johnson. Yeah. I, what he's done the second half of the year for them. Oh, was, yeah. It, it was, it was, uh, really, there was times he saved their season. Mm -hmm. I mean, how good he was in the USC game, right? But these two games against these two defensive fronts, mm -hmm. this isn't about Washington running the ball, man. Yeah, it's just not. If if Washington ever came out in this game and ran for 150 yards, I more power to them. I don't know what they'll have found that nobody else did. But <laughs> it's it's not what it's about. And I think Johnson look in short yardage and stuff like that is there's going to be some key plays here yeah. for him, here and there for him. But it's about Penix. And if I'm if I'm just going to go with, it's about Penix. It's about the receivers. They got freaks. That they have a combination of freaks that Michigan hasn't seen all year. And again, I, I think it's not being said enough that Michigan's offense isn't rolling on all cylinders, right? There, there's a lot of variable here. Like if Michigan decides that this game is the game they're going to run on all cylinders, yeah, they'll probably win by 17, something yeah. like that. But where's the evidence? I know Washington's offense is running on all cylinders. Yeah, just, did, question for you too. Did Penix look somewhat healthier? Was did we ever confirm? Was he hurt the last like two or three games? He might have been. Like the I Washington, think I, someone said that he was. Like yeah. the Washington State game. Yeah, did yeah, this, yeah. Did it ever come out like that something was wrong? No, but I, I, you looked a little hobbled. Yeah, for sure. It's like it did. It just this Texas one looked different, man. Yeah. Oh that, yeah. That was a special, special game he played, and I, I'm basically just writing the idea that Penix has maybe like. A Joe Burrow, or you mentioned he lost the game, but C.J. Stroud level of special. I, yeah. I think he's, I think he's like one of those dudes. Like yeah. I think he's just the, I, the all this this thing that suddenly he might be a first round pick. There is not a suddenly, and there is not no. a is not a no in there. He's, he's this is preseason. We knew he's this. Yeah. that good. Yeah. Like how much evidence do we need for the guy making right now? The guy making really all year. Drake May is the only other one I might argue with just the pure passing. Mm -hmm. The best throws in college. NFL, honestly, throws that half the quarterbacks in the NFL don't make. Yeah. Seriously. So and we I, saw it last year. I'm, I'm going to take Penix. I've been riding it all year. I, I can't I, – I couldn't live with myself now if I'm 6-0 and picking him. Yeah. And being 6-1, and I'm not going to do it. So, Washington, 30-27. to I actually – so – I have the same exact score as you, which is crazy. That's why I was oh, laughing wow. earlier. Uh, Thirty to twenty-seven is my final score. Listen, preseason we knew Michael Penix Jr. was going to be a first-round pick. So that that's this whole Michael Penix Jr. coming out of nowhere, we knew this preseason. We knew this last year. I, I saw. Um, I used to uh, host an NFL draft show with my friends, and I loved him at Indiana in the twenty twenty-one draft when he was eligible. I liked his tape a lot. I've, I've told you before. I saw the tape. I saw some tape of him coming out of high school in Tampa. Yeah, you, like, you, I was like, you were on him in high school. I, well, honestly, <laughs> I was like, where? I was like, where is he going? And actually, when I first heard of Indiana, I was like, yeah, Indiana. That's, <laughs> it's, it's Indiana. That's where this road's gonna yeah. end, and and obviously not. But oh, yeah, I, I remember seeing some high school tape of him in Tampa at what Tampa Bay Tech, and I was yeah. just like, that. Wow, that's okay. He that's was the number animal. number forty three quarterback coming out of high school. That was the year of Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields in that class too. So he was that class. Seventeen, sixteen. Eighteen. Eighteen. Eight. Yeah. So he's a year uh younger than me in terms of high school class in that. So um yeah, I mean he's been a stud all year. We knew that preseason. The other thing I knew preseason, Dalton, 
was that Michigan was going to win the national championship. I picked them to win the preseason, and I'm not going against it right now. Michigan is winning the national championship 30 to 27. Same exact score as you. I not, can't believe not, not planned. Not planned. No, we didn't, all, by the way. I didn't know we, anything. There's like we, we talk about a lot, but we, we don't we don't talk about the predictions before. I had no idea that was coming. So yeah. That's I think you knew that I was gonna go Michigan. You've got some psychic something going on right now. <laughs> Dude, I, I, that's why I laughed yeah. when you said 30 27. I was like, that's exactly what I, I did. Wow. Too. Okay. All right. Uh 30 to 27. I think they're gonna get pressure on Michael Penix Jr. Like they did with Jalen Moreau. I don't think it'll be that extreme, but I do think they'll do that. And if you do that, you don't let them get the deep ball going. That's the way to win. And on offense, man, I really like that matchup for them on the ground with that offensive line, with Blake Corum inside zone. Let him use his vision against a vulnerable team, a very, very vulnerable team. In fact, one of the worst in the country at defending inside zone runs. That's the key. And I think J.J. McCarthy will make a few throws, and he'll make a couple like big-time plays when they need it. But I think Blake Corum, and I think that front seven for Michigan, that's the key in this game. And that secondary is going to hold up a lot better than Texas just did. Texas had the front seven to cause Washington problems. The problem was the secondary was just getting torched back there. Michigan's won't get torched. So I said it before. I I'm taking them preseason to win the national championship. I'm taking them now to win the national championship 30-27. to That's not the only championship, Dalton, that we have to hand out today, though. So you actually went back and found all of our game picks from the season, from I think week three, right? It was when you joined yes. the show. Yep. So week three on, uh, even Army Navy we did. So on that, you had a 50 and 20 record and I had a 44 and 26 record. Now I did beat you in the playoff. I had both Washington and Michigan. So I got, so 46 and 26 and you were 51 and 21. Yep. So that so you still beat me, but I want to congratulate you, man. You are the national champion of preferred walk-on. And out of two teams. And and <laughs> well, and our ESPN Bowl Mania group. Dude, you're dominating. I just pulled that up too. Uh, yeah, I'm in, I'm in first. You're gonna get the too. free PFF subscription. I I, mean, I I don't know why I need an extra, but I'm you know I, I'll I'll pass it on to whoever whoever wants that. But um yeah yeah now don't don't leave out don't leave out the bowl i don't do we want to mention your bowl game record oh dude gonna... i'm i'm 21 and 21 in bowl games right now oh, man, i'm just garbage you really just flip did you actually just flip coins on it i i, I guess i did dude it was i'm in the 49th percentile you are 29 and 13 and you're the 99.7th percentile Feels good. You, only 0.3 percent are better dude. you know where the momentum started where I picked against Syracuse. Oh, that's yeah. right. I, I, didn't, yeah, I, I didn't pick Syracuse. Right. I didn't pick Syracuse. I knew, and I didn't pick Penn State either. See that? <sighs> See, don't we don't have to bring up that. You let you let you let your <laughs> you let your you let your biases get to you, that's dude. That Sar I think they gave me three extra losses for that Syracuse pick because they got destroyed in that game. Did I hear that that was the biggest bowl shutout ever? I think it might have been. It, it certainly looked like it when I was watching it, man. That was that game was hideous. Kyle, so Kyle McCord coming in hot. Kyle McCord, oh, please. He actually was on the sideline of that game, and I'm sure going through his head, he's like, "What did I just do?" He did. <laughs> what you, did you know I what? Just hey, do? you know, you know what we need. You know what we need for college football now. You know the Homer Simpson into the bushes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We need it. We need it with like a portal. Kyle McCord. We need it like, with no. We need it with a portal just for for anybody. Yeah. For of like the portal behind him. It's like one of those Rick and Morty portals. Yep. And it's the transfer portal. And he goes. He's like, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go back to Ohio That's, State. That's Actually, what, that's what we need. That's exactly <laughs> instead of Homer with the bushes, it's just anybody with oh, the transfer portal. Absolutely. So actually, we got one more segment. We got just Dalton is a national champion. Congratulations to Dalton. I'm coming back with a vengeance next year, though, to win it. Also, I think I, I get what am I? I'm down by probably like 20 or so games to you overall with bowl games included. I think if I get Michigan preseason pick right, I think that should count for 25 wins for me. So ultimately, 25. ultimately, the, I'd the come whole, out on the top. The whole thing. But yeah, ultimately, I come out on top if Michigan wins this game. Ultimately, is what I'm saying. Wow. Are you? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I you might you might negotiate even. I mean, but to get to get one thing right. I don't know. Man, I don't know what your pre. You didn't have a preseason pick, Dalton. So I, was, uh, I didn't even exist in the preseason. <laughs> That's true. But they didn't even know. I, I, was, I didn't. I didn't. They didn't even know yet. I was a real person. You were until eight, today. Yeah, you were eight. Yeah, you were AI. We're still constructing you in the preseason. Honestly. Yeah. But uh, See, all it's right, rigged. It's rigged. The host <laughs> always rigs it. I, I'm all right. So I, if Michigan wins, I win. I win it all. Is what we're saying. He's probably okay. gonna as rig, long as we. He's, he's probably gonna rig the next thing too. Uh, uh, yeah, we have to of course end it on uh, on trivia, which we're going to do hopefully in the offseason as well. But Dave Safaro, King, uh, put together some trivia questions as well. Eli's back there in the studio uh, with the trivia questions right now. So let's get our first trivia question, oh. Eli. Blake Corum leads college football with 43 rushing touchdowns in the last two seasons. Which Power 5 running back is second with 31? Audrick Estime, Cody Schrader, 
Quinshawn Judkins or Trey Benson? I believe, because I just put out an article, Dolan, about why I think Ole Miss is a championship contender next year. We'll get into that in a second. Um, but I believe it's Quinshawn Judkins because I think he's like leading a ton of other stats. So I would say Quinshawn Judkins because he had a great year last year, uh, true freshman. I think he's got a great year this year. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to go Quinshawn Judkins. I don't think I don't think it's Estime or Schrader because Schrader, Schrader just kind of came on this year. Yeah, he was yeah. And Estime, well, kind of the same with Estime. Because yeah, last kinda, year they had some, was it Kyron Williams? No, that was the year before. No, that was the year before. They, they had somebody someone else, else last year. Uh, I think they put Chris Tyree in the backfield a lot last year. Benson, Benson's a sleeper, though, man. Benson's sleeper. He, gets, he got a lot of work in He did. Offense. I'm going Judkins. I think, I think I'm going Judkins, too, because he had such a big year last year. Yeah. And, and Ole Miss, like, and for a great his, year this year, too. They For as creative and all that as they are, they still run the ball a lot. I'm going to take Judkins also. All right. We're both taking Quinchon Judkins. And the answer is Quinchon Judkins. Dalton, Dalton and I going one for one here. Dalton, I don't know. Uh, we, we're talking about this in our Top 25 video. But I don't know if you heard. There's rumors of Judkins entering the portal, which would be devastating for our Ole Miss uh, preseason hype. But – I don't know. I guess more NIL or something. There's rumors. He hasn't announced yet, but he they asked him about whether or not he's going to do that. He's like, I'm not really focusing on that right I, now. I so. wouldn't. I wouldn't leave there with the momentum they not, have going. I, all those I pieces they're adding on defense, and they clearly have the NIL money with what they're doing in the portal. So I, I yeah, I don't think he's going to leave. But th- there's at least the rumor that is out there right now. But all right, Quinshawn Junkins is the first answer. Question number two: Which quarterback has the highest passing grade in college football on third and fourth down and plus seven? So third and seven plus or fourth and seven plus, 93.1 passing grade. Michael Penix Jr., Bo Nix, J.J. McCarthy, or Caleb Williams. I am going to go with J.J. McCarthy here because Dave so far all puts these questions together. And I think he's going to give one J.J. question here. So I'm going to go with J.J. McCarthy. I don't know if that's the actually the answer. How many third and sevens have they been? I, I, well, I guess, that's, I, I guess that's the point is the grade if he's efficient with it. I have no logic for that besides Dave Sofaro, massive Michigan fan. I think that's the answer. Is that, is that the trick? <laughs> that might be the is trick. Is that the new? He th- gave a Blake Corum question first is, one. So maybe are, that are we his... figuring out all the tricks? This trivia? <laughs> Eli with the graphics, <laughs> Dave, Dave with the, <laughs> yeah, with Michigan. I think I'm, I, I'm going. I'm going with Penix. Let's keep the right, national Penix. title theme. Okay. Let me right, go. Good. Let me go with Penix because why not? I'm going. Yeah, I'll go. Jade McCarthy. It is Jade McCarthy. <laughs> I, figured, I figured Dave out, man. I know Dave. I know you now. You're just giving us Michigan questions the whole time. I love hmm. it. Uh, he didn't want to give. Dude, he's he's against Washington right now. He's not going to give a Michael Penix answer. He's just. <laughs> See, see, to base to base questions off of T. That's just I love it. I love it, Dave. Keep he, he, keep he, feeding he the next one. He builds these questions off of people's emotions. It's yeah, not, it's not right. I can't wait. Give me the next one. Give me the next one. Give me another Michigan one. This quarterback leads the country with 15 passing touchdowns from inside the 10 yard line. You got Drew Aller, Cade Klubnick, Carson Beck, and Noah Fafita. Did Aller even throw 15 touchdowns? I don't think he did. Um, I don't think I don't think he threw the ball 15 times this year, Dalton. I, it's <laughs> criminal what they're doing with him this year. Um, Aller Beck what was Aller Beck Fafita and Klubnik. Klubnik, right? Uh, oh, mm-hmm. I kind of like Fafita. I think I might go Fafita. I think I don't know. I, I don't think it's Klubnik. I, I'm bothered that Klubnik is there. I don't think it's Aller either. I think it's Fafita. And I think, yeah. I th- yeah Penn I think State didn't get vertical at all either. Georgia, yeah, true. Georgia, I think, runs the ball a lot inside the 10. I don't know if it's Beck. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go I'm gonna go Fafita from Arizona. I'm going to go with Beck. I feel like I should just uh, – because I think – does he have the most touchdowns in general of those four guys? He might, honestly. That's, uh, yeah, that's I'll, playing, I'll take, that's playing I'll the take odds. I'll take Beck, and I have a feeling Club Nick's on there for a reason. Yeah. All right. Wow, it is Drew Aller. Da- I knew – you see, I knew see, Dave, too. I thought Dave was going to give me a Penn State question. That's that's what it was. I don't know why I didn't take it. Damn. All right, Dave. He just he – just, he's, he's feeding it. How does, this is not This is not right. If we get an FAU question, you know you have to – Get it right there. If we get an FAU question, if it better be about basketball. <laughs> Honestly. I think, I, I, I think that was the last question we had. So I went, what, two for three, and you went one for three on trivia. Oh, so we only had three today? I oh, think he gave, yo, he gave you your – no, did you go – no, you didn't go three for three. Sorry. No, I, 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 I would have gone through three if I got out there if I didn't do that. But, uh, but yeah, man, so we got for a national championship preview. You got Eli in the studio back there, absolute king. Uh, it's a blast having Dalton here in studio. But, Dalton – 
this actually won't be the only uh, in-studio show that we're doing. So we're actually, tomorrow, we're going to be recording our way too early top 25 for 2024. We are recording that before the national championship game, and that will come out immediately after the national championship game is over. We will be dropping that video of our top 25 teams heading into next season. Obviously, a, a lot is still up in the air about NFL draft declarations. A lot of guys have not uh, have not done that yet. Uh, transfer portal, still a ton of guys uh, available in the transfer portal. Is Jim Harbaugh coming back? Is J.J. McCarthy? Like a lot of uh, up in the air, but we're going to do our best of giving you the top 25 teams. That is subject to change, by the way, after everything else that goes on, man. But, man, it's been a, an unreal season with you, man, and had one more preview to go, and this was, uh, I think this is a blast, man. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I just appreciate you guys, uh, you know, letting me, letting me join. And letting yeah. Me, it's, it's, it's been a blast. And what, what a wild ride of a season. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's just, just been an unbelievable season with – a, a whole lot of a whole lot of fun, a whole lot of controversy, and everything in between, and and I think we're getting we're getting the finale we deserve for sure. Oh, absolutely! So make sure you're, like you see right there. Uh, follow us wherever you get your podcast: Apple, Google, Spotify, wherever. Leave five star reviews there, and leave your questions there for our mailbag episode that we will get to. Now that we're finally done with the season we will get to them and also leave uh some of your takes as well as to what you know we want us to react to but for the national championship preview dawn 30 27 washington winning it all me 30 27 michigan winning it all we'll get eli's pick out there as well and we'll, we'll tweet that out as well but both picking a 30 27 national championship with two different winners so it should be an absolutely awesome game so enjoy the national championship game for Dalton Wassman for producer Eli back there I'm Max Chadwick and we'll see you guys with our way too early top 25 coming out on Monday night <laughs>